since the talks on levels of sex energy and various topics related to this were uploaded there was tremendous response and the listenership throughout the world these videos were widely viewed in Saudi Arabia Japan and basically in the Muslim countries where the subject is considered to be a taboo sometimes ago i have uploaded a quote on facebook account because this is one of the window where thousands of seekers are looking for maybe in the beginning they may not be as sincere as they should be but somewhere or the other the journey has to begin it was put on that if someone wants the sex energy to move upwards then it is better not to do the breathing through the belly when you want your sexual energy to move upwards it is better not to do the belly breathing when the belly is pulled in the energy is sucked upwards more easily this was the goal it is in this light i will speak the role of sculptures why they have been created in a particular way its effect on meditation and various other techniques i will touch somewhat on this particular aspect of the breathing through the belly and other techniques as well i will begin with the statues of buddha these statues were created in a specific manner for a specific purpose watching a buddha statue is like watching a yantra yantra is a mathematical mystical device it may be in the form of a table it may be in any form it is a device you have to understand and you will be surprised to know that buddha statues have nothing to do with gautam buddha they are all false and do not resemble with buddha at all but they have something to do with buddha not with gautam buddha the person they have something to do with your inner search with your buddha when you go to a jain temple there are statues of 24 tirthankars the the past masters the founders of jainism and you will not be able to make a difference between them they are all alike to make a distinction jains make a small symbol on them to know who he is because all look alike so if somebody's symbol is a line figure then just underneath the feet is a small line figure then they know who is the statue is this somebody's symbol may be snake then they know who is the statue is this if those symbols were hidden not even the jains could have been able to make any demarcation whose statue is this mahavir's parashnath 
or Adinath. Adinath was the first founder of Jainism. And you will be surprised to know that they are exactly like Buddha. There is no difference at all. In the beginning, when the West became acquainted with Mahavir, they thought it was nothing but the same story of Buddha. Because both belong to royalties, both abandoned their royalties and the royal ways. The statue is same, the philosophy is same, they were contemporaries, they lived in the same state in the east of India, they wandered around the same region and their understanding is same, the teaching is same, so it was just the same thing. It was nothing different from Buddha. Thus the people in the West thought Mahabir was another name of Buddha. And of course both are called Buddhas. Buddhas means the awakened one. So Buddha was called Buddha and Mahabir was also called Buddha. And also both were called Jainas because Jain means the conqueror. One who has conquered himself. Buddha is called Jain and Mahabir is called the Jain so they thought that they were just the same person. And the statues are great proof. They look absolutely alike. They are not photographic. They do not represent a person in any way. And instead they represent a certain state. When you look at the statue of Buddha, there is a particular way it is shown, the head is shown. Buddha never had his head like that. There is a reason for it. The moment an individual attains the ultimate, this is total. Thereafter there isn't anything. There is a complete discontinuity with the body. This is the ultimate. There is no need to live after that. Yet still the masters live because they have a certain work to be performed. So when somebody becomes sannyasi, he goes and shaves off his head and the head shaving is done on a particular date, 15th of each month. 15th is known as Shivratri, a Hindu festival which is the night of Shiva, the night of creation and dissolution. And it happens that there is a connectivity on that particular day when the head is shaved, the energy is preserved and it enhances the very purpose of meditation, the very purpose of the masters was how to create devices to enhance your energies. So various tantras, mantras and Yantra techniques were devised. You have to understand and then the thing will be explained. In India, three words are very important. One is mantra, tantra, which we are talking about. Another is mantra and the third is yantra. Tantra means techniques for expanding your consciousness. Consciousness is the subtle form of energy. When you have tremendous energy, body is not weak, then you have energy to put into the other channels. Consciousness expands, understanding comes, and the journey becomes easy. Mantra means finding your inner sound, your inner rhythm, your inner vibration. And once you have found your mantra, it is of tremendous help. Just one utterance of the mantra and you are in a totally different world. That becomes the key, the passage. 
because once uttering that mantra you fall in your natural vibe you have fallen in tune with your being and the third is called yantra these statues of buddha and mahavir they are yantras gurjeev calls these as objective arts when you continue to look at the buddha's sculpture something begins to happen within your being within you yantra means a certain figure which can create a certain state in you a certain geometry geometry for meditation a certain figure if you look at it it is bound to create a certain state in you have you not watched it look at the picasso painting and within a short period of time you will start feeling uneasy concentration on a picasso painting for half an hour and you will feel bizarre something is going crazy in you you cannot look at picasso painting for half an hour if you keep picasso painting in your bedroom you will have nightmares you will have very dangerous dreams being haunted by ghosts tortured by hitlers and things like that a war victim in a concentration camp things like that happen when you are watching something it is not that the figure is outside when you watch something the figure creates a certain situation within you. that is why gurjeev used to call these as objective arts and you know listening to modern pop music something happens in you you become more excited sexual there is nothing more there is nothing but sound outside but the outside sound hits inside and creates something in you listening to classical music you become less sexual and less excited in fact the great classical music when you listen you almost forget sex you are in tranquility a silence a totally different dimension of your being is explored you exist on a totally different plane watching a buddha statue or the sculptures that have been created as erotics in the temples in kochaho ajanta and alora caves it is like watching yantra the figure of a statue the geometry all creates a figure in you. and that inside figure creates a certain vibrations such things are not just imaginations instead buddha statues create a certain vibes in you this is why when i create the videos i create those kind of images which will create a certain vibe in you even while you are watching it becomes multi dimensional firstly the subject matter secondly the gaps between the two words the energy field the background music the images all these create an ambiance so when you are listening to whether with eyes open you cannot keep your eyes open for a long period of time and certainly in each each time when you listen to these meditations you will disappear for few min- moments to few minutes slowly and slowly this 
the span of time of disappearance becomes longer and longer prolonged this is why it is a device created to create certain vibes within you so to these sculptures were created to create a certain vibe within you watch the statue of buddha sitting so silently in a certain yoga posture if you go on watching the statue you will find something like that is happening within you too if you are in the company of 10 persons are sad and you are the 11th one how long can you remain happy those 10 persons will function as a yantra a yantra of sadness you will fall into sadness sooner or later if you are unhappy and you go in the company where people are joking and laughing how long can you remain sad those laughing people will create laughter within you they will change your focus they will change your gear you will start moving in a different direction this happens every day knowingly or unknowingly when you watch a full moon what happens to you or when you listen to the birds and look at the green trees what happens to you when you go into a forest and look at the greenery all around what happens to you something green inside starts happening something green inside starts happening within you green is the color of nature the color of spontaneity and the color of life then something green starts happening within you the outdoor color color reflects something inside vibrates within something create something inside looking at a green tree you become more alive you become younger when you go to himalayan mountains and you see the mountain the snow capped peaks eternal snow which has never melted the purest snow where no man has ever walked uncontaminated by human society and human touch when you look at the himalayan peak that uncorrupted virgin snow creates something virgin within you the outer is not the outer the inner is not just inner they are joined together they are bridged so be aware of what you see be aware of what you listen be aware be aware of what you read and be aware of where you go because all that creates you creates impulses creates vibes within you the many buddha statues all around you create create a certain geometry you will be surprised that is the basic reason why these statues and these sculptures were created they are not idols as the christians and muslims think and the judic idea have given a very wrong notion to the world that these are the idol worshipers this is erroneous and this is ignorant these are not idols instead these are devices to create a certain vibe within you a certain geometry within you a geometry of meditation they are very scientific they are not real objects to be worshiped 
instead they are geometries to be imbibed geometries of a certain kind it is a totally different thing in china there is one buddha temple which has 10000 buddha statues all buddha statues wherever you look the same figure is seen ceiling has the same figure all the sides have same figure and the walls have the same figure 10000 buddha statues just think sitting cross legged in a buddha posture and you are also surrounded by 10000 buddhas it creates a certain geometry from everywhere buddha impinges upon you from every nook and corner he starts surrounding you you are gone your ordinary geometry is no longer there your ordinary life is no longer there for a few moments you are moving on a higher plane at higher altitude that is what happens during these meditation sessions through the voice through its modulation through the gaps a certain geometry is created while listening to me during the meditation sessions something is created by my presence by my words and by your attitude your approach to it it is a situation it becomes a temple a temple is a situation it is not just you are sitting in a lecture hall instead it is a situation so many people listening to me with such love gratitude such silence such sympathy and such rapport that this place becomes home thus this place and this commune where you all are gathered becomes a pilgrimage a holy place it is sick when you come into this place you are riding on a wave you need not make any effort you can simply allow it to happen you will be taken away far away to the other shore what man has been doing to me naturally this madness has erupted everywhere in painting in music in sculpture in architect everywhere the ugly human mind has created ugliness ugliness has become an aesthetic beauty now the photographer goes and looks for something ugly not that beauty has a stop exists it exists as much as before but it is neglected the cactus has replaced rose in the bedroom not that cactus is something new it has always existed but now in this century we have come to know that thorns seem to be more real than the rose flower a rose flower seems to be a dream it does not fit with us has the rose rose flower has been expected cactus has entered your drawing rooms just 100 years ago nobody would have ever thought to bring a cactus home now if you are modern your garden will be full of cactus the rose looks a little bourgeois the rose looks a little out of date rose looks orthodox and traditional cactus looks revolutionary yes cactus is revolutionary like 
Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong. Yes, the cactus seems to be closer to this century. The photographer looks for something ugly. He will go and photograph a beggar. Not that beggars has not existed before. He has existed before. He is real, certainly real. But nobody has been making art out of him. We are feeling humble before the beggar. We are feeling apologetic before the beggar. We are feeling that something which should not be still there. We want beggar not to be there. But this century goes on searching for all that is ugly. The sun pistol penetrates the pine on a certain morning. The rays penetrating the pine creates a web of beauty. It is still exists, but no photographer is interested that no longer appeals. Ugliness appeals because we have become ugly. That which appeals to us shows something about us. Buddha is a rose flower and that is the highest possibility of inner flower. And remember it is not exactly a Buddha figure. Nobody knows what Buddha looked like. But that is not the point. We were not interested in those days, at least not in the East. We were not interested in the real at all. We were interested in ultimate real. We were not interested in factual. We were interested in truth itself. Maybe Buddha's nose was a little longer. But if the artist thought that the nose which was little smaller would be more in tune with meditation. And then he dropped that long nose of Buddha he made it a little small. Maybe Buddha had a big belly. Who knows? Japanese Buddha statues have big bellies. But Indian Buddhas do not have big bellies. Different approaches, different attitudes. In Japan, they think that the meditator has to breathe from the belly, from the navel. And when you breathe from the belly, the belly of course becomes bigger. Then the chest is not protruding as the belly. The chest is relaxed. So Japanese Buddha have big bellies. Because it is through the navel that you are connected, you were connected once through the umbilical cord to your mother's womb for nourishment and you were getting your nourishment. When you are doing the breathing through the belly, so naturally as the breath comes in the belly swells and the chest gets a flattish. This way you are connected to the cosmic energy and with that bridge that is established with that kind of breathing, the energy comes with you. It is important. That too is for a certain reason to indicate to you the belly breathing is the right breathing. It has nothing to do with Buddha. Nobody knows whether he had big belly or not. This is correct. The other two is correct. When you look into these things in segregation, then you will ask a question. When you see the totality of it, first you fill a cup of cup with water, then you empty it. This is the process that goes on. 
you never ask why in the first place are you filling the cup and then emptying it out you fill the tea cup with the tea or coffee and then you empty it because both are important as part of one process first you have to fill it and then you have to empty it so where does the conflict arise where does this question arise that it is better not to belly breathe when belly is pulled in the energy is sucked so what happens when you fill it is a dip, fill the cup with the tea or with water or with any other fluid like thing it is like you filling your belly with that how would you know how can you empty the cup which is already empty first you have to fill it and then you have to empty it in the process of filling and emptying you are getting the energy first you fill it then you empty it and the both processes are integrated you will not serve anyone with an empty cup you will serve him with full cup the fluid inside the cup represents energy the water the tea coffee juice or any other fluid represents energy so when you breathe within when you do the belly breathing you are bringing tremendous cosmic energy within you you are filling your cup now you have to consume it these are the two aspects of it it is not that they are in conflict with one another these are the two processes of one process so when you breathe from the belly the belly of course becomes a little bigger then the chest is not protruding as the belly chest is relaxed so japanese buddha have big bellies and relaxed chest chest represents the higher emotions it is the seat of heart it is it represents a relaxed awareness so first you fill your cup only then you can consume in the morning when you make your breakfast you make your tea first you fill your cup and then you drink it to get the energy so belly breathing and sucking the belly the breathing the air out of belly both are part of one process to bring energy into you when you do the breathing through the belly the belly gets protruded looks bigger and the chest becomes relaxed it is filling that too is for a certain reason to indicate that belly breathing is the right breathing it has nothing to do with buddha nobody knows whether buddha had a big belly or not this is the reason that i had put the code that it is better not to do the belly breathing but it is now if i tell you that filling the cup is important and filling the cup is not important you will find it confusing these represents the states first you fill your cup so cup is filled then you need not fill the cup because it has no more space until it is emptied then you use the exercises and what is the exercise you start sipping it sipping is a process of sucking the 
the fluid the tea that is there in the cup the cup becomes a belly and filling is the process of breathing in breathing life into it and then you start sipping it and when you start sipping it it gives you nourishment so two are part of one process in tomorrow's session i will speak on the techniques of this it is important that we have among our meditation session people who are aware who are interested in their own group and it is a group together in togetherness the master and the disciple group together the chest is relaxed so japanese buddha have big bellies that too is for a specific reason to indicate to you that belly breathing is the right breathing because it relaxes you that after your cup is filled all the process of the hustling comes to an end you are looking for milk you are looking for sugar you are looking for tea bags and which kind of tea you have to make you have to look for the match box or your gas lighter if the gas tank is finished or electricity is not there you have to find the alternative all these hustles have to be there before your cup is filled when the cup is filled you can relax and sit down you can put on your music put on your favorite channel and then sip by sip you drink that energy so belly breathing is the right breathing it has nothing to do with buddha nobody knows whether he had a big belly or not but then there is another aspect the indian statues do not have big bellies because indian yoga does not insist on belly breathing it is the second stage the belly has to be in that too has a different reason if you want sexual energy to move upward then it is better not to belly breathe when the belly is pulled in the energy is sucked upwards more easily and there are different techniques this is a different technique so is it not important to fill your cup first go through the hustle and then relax and take the sip to our important belly breathing is also good for certain meditators it is very relaxing but then the energy cannot move in the same way as it moves when the belly is pulled in indian statues of buddha have small bellies almost no belly nobody knows exactly how buddha looked the statues are very feminine very round they do not look masculine at all have you ever seen any statue with a mustache and beard no the people who painted jesus were more realistic the people who painted buddha were not concerned with the facticity they were more concerned with ultimate truth they were not concerned how buddha looked instead they were concerned with how buddha should look buddha is a geometry and then geometry creates a your inner geometry connects you to your inner geometry this was the very purpose that the statues the sculptures were created in the temples in india and this was of a tremendous importance this was not explored and the ignorant ones the christians the muslims found that these are idol worshipers these sculptures are not idols you look at the te- the sculptures in ajanta and alora the erotics they have been created for a specific purpose so that you can 
remove all distractions and move to your inner sense. There are certain sculptures which I will explain in continuous in continuing program tomorrow in the second part. They were not concerned with how Buddha looks, the facts about it. Instead, they were concerned with how Buddha should look. And these sculptures were created by their masters. The emphasis was not on Buddha but on people who should be looking at these statues. How this statue is going to help the people. So Buddha is not painted as old. He must have been old. He reached the ripe age of 82. He was very old, certainly very sick too. A physician has to follow him continuously. But no statue has painted him old, ill, because that was not the point. We were not interested in the physical body of Buddhas. We were interested in his inner geometry. That inner quality of Buddha is always here. It is never old and it is never ill. It has always been in a state of well-being. By its very nature, it cannot be ill. The body is young, the body is old, the body becomes crippled, the body dies. Buddha is not born and never dies. Buddha remains eternally young. There is a discontinuity between the physical and the inner. It is for this reason that these statues, these sculptures have been created as a geometry to create an innerness in you. To create that the inner is always alive and life invigorating, young, not ugly and old. You will not see any statues in Indian temples which has a moustache, a beard. They are all feminine because this is the quality of meditation. It is to create the meditativeness within you that these sculptures were created. Looking at a young statue, something of youth will happen in you. You will feel something fresh. So Indians would never have preferred Jesus to be pictured, painted and sculptures on the cross because it looks ugly, it is sad, it creates a sadness in you. And when you look at the sculpture, it should create something exhilarating within you, something overflowing within you, even if it is historical. The Jesus on the cross is a manifestation of sadness. It is not worth remembering because whatsoever you think has happened, you tend to help it to happen again. There is no obligation towards facts. We do not owe anything to the past. We need not remember the past as it was. Do you think you want to remember your past when it was ugly? When you were tormented? When you were torn apart? Or you want to remember something which is exhilarating, which is creating joy in you? So these sculptures was created to forget all that ugly past. The, all the illnesses that you had once gone through, the psychological, the physical illness that you had gone through once and create a new aura around you, a new geometry. Only then you can go beyond. If you continue to remember how your boyfriend or girlfriend cheated you or you had been tormented, how can you enter into meditation? You will be haunted by it. This is why a new inner geometry has to be created. It is a device of the masters. 
the voice, the meditations, the use of certain kind of pictures, use of certain kind of music, a certain kind of voice modulation is all essential to create a geometry of meditation, a geometry of joy. Is in our hands choose the past, to choose the past in such a way that a better future can be created. This is creating a new geometry. Yes, Jesus was crucified, but if he was crucified in India, he would have not been painted that way. Even on the cross, we would have painted a totally different thing, a totally overflowing Jesus. Western painting is of Jesus in anguish, in sadness, naturally. He is being killed. When you watch, when you concentrate, meditate on Jesus, you will feel sad. It is not accidental that Christians say that Jesus never laughed. And it is not accidental that you are not allowed to dance and laugh and be happy in a church. Church is a serious affair. You have to be very serious, sitting with long faces. In fact, when Jesus is crucified, just there on the altar, how can you laugh and sing? And cross has been used as a symbol can never become the symbol of meditation. It can never become a symbol. It can never become the geometry to create joy and bliss in you. In India, you can sing and laugh and enjoy. Religion is celebration. The whole point is that the Western mind is historical. Eastern mind is existential. These statues, sculptures are existential. They are not representing a certain history. The West pays too much attention to the mundane fact and the East never pays any attention to history. You will be surprised to know that until the Western people came to India, India has known, not known anything like history. We are not certain about the date of birth of these Buddhas. We have never written history. We have never bothered about it. That is why we do not know when exactly Buddha was born, when exactly he died. We have never paid much respect to the facts. Facts are mundane. What does it matter whether he was born on a Monday or Tuesday or Thursday? What does it matter? How does it matter? In fact, it does not matter at all. Any day will do. Any year will do. That is not the point. The point is who was born? Who was this man in his innermost core? What was his inner geometry? Can his inner geometry create a parallel geometry within you? This is the point. And this is the point that is reflected exhibited through the sculptures, in the temples, in the caves. History thinks about the periphery. Myth thinks about the innermost core. India has written mythology but not history. We have Puranas. Puranas are mythology. They are not histories. They are poetic, mystic, and mystic visions on how things should be, not how they were, not how they are. They are the visions of the ultimate. And Buddha is the vision of ultimate Samadhi. Buddha is the vision of ultimate Samadhi. This is why these sculptures have been created. Buddha is the vision of ultimate Samadhi. This is why these sculptures were created. Tomorrow's session, I will continue this 
Buddha's statues are the state of inner silence. It represents, it is a device to create the geometry of silence, an image of silence, a sculpture of silence. And it is for this reason the entire yoga system developed. There are certain yoga exercises which helps you to pull your belly in. It is known as Kapal Bhati. It is known as Anlom Vilom. And it is known as Bhastrika. All these are done in harmony with one another. One supplements the other. Just as going through the process of looking out for all the ingredients to make a cup of tea, putting everything, the water, the milk, the sugar, the fire, the tea bag. If one of these things is missing, the tea will not be available there. And you will be in a chaos looking for this item or that. This is important. It is a part of that. It is a process of complete relaxation, a complete process. Then you make a cup of tea. The cup that was empty, you fill it. You do the belly breathing. You are filling your cup. Because if the energy is not there, how would you sip it? How would you take it upwards? And you remember when you are hungry, there is emptiness in the belly. You need to put something into it. But before you put something into it, you have to make it. Fill the cup and then sip by sip, empty it. And this process is known as sucking the energy, the air from the belly. In Kapal Bhati, we simply exhale. So when you exhale with the force, what happens? The belly goes in, the air is sucked in. And it is exhaled. And in this becomes a process. So I will speak on these in subsequent program. Because this particular techniques have to be shown probably in individual session through the video device so that you can see it or I have to direct you to certain videos where you can see how this particular breathing of exhaling and it has many reasons for it.